This is the Premier Dancing Flame Candle, and I've got a wee niggle with it, in the sense that it's a wee bit over dramatic. I mean, these these are a cheap copy of the um, more expensive Dancing Flame effects, but the one place they fall down is that the colour of the LED is usually a bit random. In this case, it's actually not too bad, but they also pulse the coil too hard and too rhythmically, and it makes the flame click about quite. Sort of regularly and often strikes the little plastic mounting for the LED. So this video is about opening this candle and putting a resistor in series with that um, coil to reduce that uh, clacking effect and make a more subtle flame effect. Now these candle bodies are made of actual wax which means that when you try to get the plastic in body out inside they tend to split. I've split quite a few of these in the past usually by trying to uh, prise it open by putting a screwdriver in under there and hoiking it out. It just doesn't come out. The, the glue they use is like a, a sort of rubbery cement and it just sticks solid. So what I've found the best approach to do, to use, is to push the whole body out from this end and taking great care to do so. Now, two things you could do here that wouldn't be good. You could damage the plastic flame, you could bend it, snap it, or something like that. And there's also a wee wire down here with a little indentation in it to actually keep the flame centred at the correct distance. So you want, don't want to damage any of those. So find a bit of plastic tubing that's going to fit over that, put it over the flame, and then push down. And as you push the base will very slowly slide out. It doesn't happen quickly. Some of them come out easier than others, but this one is obviously one of the tight ones. They don't even come out evenly in some of them. Some of them they come out at a sort of angle. This one's not too bad, it's moving. Ah, there we go. That is one of the easiest I've done so far. And you'll see um, this sort of stretchy, rubbery glue they use uh, to stick that in. Once you've got one out, um, it should go back in okay. You can take some of the glue out if you want, but um, it's worth leaving some in because it will help hold it in once you've um, reassembled it. So let's take a wee look. I've covered these in another video, how they've got the LED in here. You can physically unclip this, and if you want, you could actually change the colour of the LED either to one that actually closer resembled a candle flame and if it was too bright you could put a resistor in series the LED or you could just go completely over the top and you could put a green LED or a blue LED in to get very weird surrealistic type candle flames. However, that's not what this video is about. This video is about the little coil that's mounted in this circuit board here. So I'm going to desolder um, one of those connections. I'm also going to swap polarity because I found in a previous uh, version of this I did that I've, the polarity gives a completely different effect because it's either pulling the magnet into the middle or it's repulsing it to the outside. So actually initially I'll try just putting the resistor in. So I'm going to desolder one of those leads first and I'm going to make it uh, the black one here. So I'm just going to flow some solder in that. and it should pop off. There we go. And I'm going to get a 150 ohm resistor. 100 to 150 ohms about right for this. This also dramatically reduces the current consumption of the candle so the battery should last a lot longer. And I'm going to tin one end of the resistor. and retin where I'm soldering it onto, which is where that connection was taken off. So put some fresh lead-based solder in that, because lead-based solder is the best type of solder. And I'm going to reflow that uh, resistor onto that solder pad. If I can actually, I think I really need to clean this tip. I've been using it on plastic, which isn't a good thing to do. There we go. And I'm going to crop the resistor lead down to about 5mm, a quarter of an inch type area. And then I'm going to tin the end of it. And 
and we're going to tin this wire because it's going to get soldered onto the resistor and that way the resistor will be in line with the coil. Okie dokie. I'll hold this up so it's a so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So I'm just flowing this lead on like that. The resistor is now in series of the coil and I'll just um, power this on and see how it looks. It's not too bad, but it is quite rhythmic, so I'm going to swap those two wires around. It's not bad, actually. It's not too bad, but I'm going to try swapping the wires around, polarity-wise, and that's will... Um, I may just leave the resistor on, so I'll take the red wire off, take the black wire, so to the black wire where the red wire was, So I've soldered the black wire on the other side where the red wire was. I shall tin the red wire and apply a little bit more solder to the resistor just so it's got something to flow. And I'll put the red wire onto this one. Oh, I'm trying to hold it up to make it a bit more visible, but it's quite tricky when I do that. Okay, so now I'll try that again, and I'll see how it looks. You can't really see from that angle the effect of the flame. I'd have to hold the camera in front uh, to show it. If I tilt, tilt this on its side, the, the flame will just flop to one side. Yeah, that's not bad. I think that actually looks better, because it does waver in a more subtle and um, fluid manner. So then, once you've done that modification, if you're not uh, changing the LED... Um, if you wanted to change the LED, you'd unclip this, you'd unscrew the two parts with just that single screw, making note that the little wire that supports the flame is very easy to lose, it drops out quite easily and has to go in a specific way round, but uh, just make note of the, where the indent is before you do that, and the flame would also come out of that wire. But the LED just sits in between the two halves of the case and sandwiches in, so a, a green flame looks kind of psychedelic and a blue flame looks good too. So um, it's worth doing things like this just for fun. These are cheap enough to just play about with. They're, they're about £10 in the UK, so they'd be about $10 in America. And once you've done your modification, just pop the flame over again, the uh, housing over. Note that the wire inside should point, and you'll see a slight chink in the, the sort of um, the plastic casing that the LED shines through. You want to get that roughly to the pointed to the front of the candle, and then just push it in, and it should hold itself in. And that should modify the candle. It's going to be a lot quieter, a lot more subtle, and the um, the battery life is going to be increased greatly too. It's a uh, it's well worth playing about with these and experimenting, they're quite an enjoyable little thing.